This is the Night Wolf howling at you, and today we're going to take a look at the Monster High Cleo Denial Basic Doll. Funny story behind this video right now, I had somehow managed to delete the beginning of the video. So the part where I originally talked about this and then unboxed it is of course missing. So that being said, right now I'm just talking over an image I took and uh, we will get into the main bit of the video in a little few moments here that'll start after what would normally be the unboxing time. And so I wanted to say I got this doll at Ross. It's the first time I have seen this doll. And if you look at the back, you can see that they also have on there Claudine, Draculaura, and Frankie, the original three basic dolls that they put out in this manner. Uh, I don't recall ever seeing Cleo before I saw this one at Ross. And what was interesting is this was actually a display that had um, the Monster High dolls, these three basic ones, because they just, well, they just had the Cleo Denio, the Draculaura, and the Frankie. They did not have the Claudine in there. Plus, I think they had some Polly Pocket stuff in there, and I, I want to say there was a couple other things, but I don't remember exactly what they were. But it was one of those cardboard displays you often see in the middle of an aisle at a store. So, uh, I think this was special for Ross. And I do believe this may be the first time we've seen this version of Cleo. Of course, monster type, fabulous royal mummy. Her pet is Tut. And that's all the information we get. That's in English. And I am terrible at pronouncing other languages, so I'm not going to try. But overall, uh, the package is just basic and, you know, nothing too special. Dell herself looks pretty good, though. So we will get around to showing you the doll from the point where I pull the stupid little plastic tabby things out of her hair because they always like to put those in the back of them head, holding them to the pla plastic. So uh, please enjoy. <laughs> we got our big old pliers here. <laughs> Hey, we got it all whole. And we got the other one out whole. Oh, that's her ear. You know, I never noticed this before. Her ears go out really far. Is that the same on all the Cleo dolls? I mean, I would assume they're still using the same head sculpt on all of them, but how have I never noticed that before, if it is? Funny story, I guess. If you remember from the Generation 1 doll line, which was really super popular, <sighs> There is another one in here. Yeah. Oh. Um, there was the whole thing where Monster High became popular with the age with an age group that Mattel had not been expecting. And oh shit, I took out a bunch of hair with that one. And it also became very popular with customizers who like to make their own monsters and you know. Cleo was actually fairly popular because she was the only one who had a purely human looking body, right? And in a human skin tone. And ultimately, Mattel apparently did not like that they did not get the younger audience that they were hoping for. And the occasional complaints from parents of younger kids who are like, they're very dark and horror looking. And, uh, we don't want to buy them for our younger kids because of that. That might scare them. Shh, crap like that. So that's when they rebooted the Generation 2 line. And that line did not do particularly well because it lost a lot of the Generation 1 fan base of the older people who were buying them. And the customizers who liked to customize those dolls. 
especially again because generation two is when they started doing this bullshit with the uh wrappings as part of her body which is something that even today still annoys the hell out of me because the wrappings are not part of her skin it covers her skin it is clothing doing the wrap style on the clothing makes sense doing it as part of the doll's body does not so anyway her purse here opens up like so and we might be able to fit the burrito in there or whatever Ooh, i wonder if we can fit the bag of chips in there nope bag's a little too wide that's a shame I'm guessing that more of these are in some of those play sets they made that I don't really care about in Generation 3. Her bag does have a nice scarab design, though. Painted on one side, not painted on the other. Although they did do a lot of deco here. I mean, we got like, what, one, two, three, four, five different colors on there. So that's actually, I'll give them credit for that much on that. All right, so her face sculpt looks really good. I like the makeup on her. I know somebody who does a lot of um, detailed eye makeup. I should send her a picture to see if she can duplicate this sort of thing. I wonder if she could. She also has the little golden dot in her lipstick or Obviously, since they will actually put a lip piercing and actually have it be a separate piece, that's not supposed to be a piercing, but it's just a little bit of de detail. Kind of like when you see some of the women do the little heart on their um, lipstick in a darker color, like the pink lipstick with the red heart. Although maybe that's not something that happens in the area where you live. So. She's also got a pretty nice amount of detail in the little feathers on her headband, which is also kind of nice looking. Painted only on one side. Articulation wise, she, of course, has the ball joint that allows her head to spin all over the place, which is nice. She's got up, down and spin around on her arms. We have a single joint in the elbow, which does give us a little better than 90 degree of a bend. And because there's a peg, we, of course, can spin it around. Her hand pegged in spins around freely and she has in and out articulation. In the case of this doll, though, that joint is extremely loose. Uh, I don't know if that's common with these dolls or if that's just literally this one. Um, the articulation on this one does feel a bit better. Her skirt is super tight to the point where I feel like it's actually pushing the legs together closer than what they would normally be. And it really hinders articulation there. So we will have to strip her a little bit in order to try that out. Uh, she does have a single joint in the knee and there is a peg in there. I do kind of wish that they would actually consider putting double jointed knees on some of these dowels. But then they have a, a number of different leg designs now because it looks like both Abby and Venus have longer legs and thicker legs. Draculaura has shorter legs and thicker legs. I guess I'm looking at Cleo as kind of being the average body. So there's a lot of different body types that they would have to put the extra joints in and they probably don't want to do that. I noticed back in the days of Ever After High, the torsos were all the same. It was just the limbs that were shorter to make the different characters shorter. And I think that was the same with Monster High back then, too. Her shoes actually look pretty nice. Um, double deco. Uh, I do kind of wonder why they didn't just paint this thing up here blue also, since they painted the bottom of it. I mean, I guess it's supposed to look like that's just holding it in place, but I think it would have been better if that whole gem there was painted. Of course, there's no articulation in the feet, but there never is with these things. And she's got a, um, a wart. 
Yes, we will call it that. She has got a wart on her foot. I, I know it's just the fleshing from the uh, mold, but still. But, you know, the shoes aren't too bad looking. I actually do kind of like the design. Um, and they have given Cleo some really awful shoes over the years. Her belt comes off and on the back. Her necklace, of course, is just the kind of standard, does not clip together type of thing, but is right now being held in place by a rubber band. Her dress, surprisingly, actually has print on the back, where usually with these kind of basic figures, they leave the back plain and don't do anything with it. In this case, the front has also a bunch of detail, but it has this strip of I'm going to say it's glued on glitter in this case. But now, as I mentioned, um, it looks like the rubber band that is holding her necklace in place is actually going underneath her dress arm arms or sleeves arms so that that made it real difficult to try to pull off but hmm, shoes off hmm. when we go ahead and remove her dress we do see that she has the spider web design underwear which as far as the underwear that they've done for monster high i do like the spider web design for it and without that we can now check that her leg will kick all the way up here without the dress on it will kick back about yay far we can kick out only about yay far but if you kick out both legs you can get a nice good uh kick there Her necklace, on the other hand, this is kind of an interesting thing, too, is even though it does not actually like clip together, I do kind of like how they have the little um, excess here on the back. Because usually with these necklaces, they just kind of like they would normally just be kind of like just this. Right. But, you know, when you put a necklace on, unless it's you know specifically made to go or I should say when it's made to be kind of tight around the neck. There's usually that little bit that's hanging off on the back. So that's actually a nice detail to have put in there. The dress itself. Um, not what I would consider to be the highest quality material. Although now that strip that I thought was just glued on glitter, though, it actually looks like it is a um, a sewn on ribbon of uh, glittery material. So that's cool. And of course, there is the metallic highlights in the sleeves, which that definitely is a glued on feature. No, her hand is still stuck in the sleeve. <laughs> so the dress actually is a pretty nice design. I think it would be kind of cool to see somebody remake that. Now let's go ahead and dress her again. No, oh. yeah, there she goes. She's got a word on the other foot too. I'm trying to help her keep her modesty here. By the way, some other fun fun bit of information. A lot of the Bratz clothes work really well with the old Monster High dolls too. And the Ever After High Dolls. The overall necklace design really isn't too bad. I do, do think it would have been nice if they'd had a clip for it, though, so that it wouldn't actually move around so much because now once we've got that rubber band gone and it's not actually holding it directly to her it kind of sits awkwardly 
And with the dress back in place, her legs are now scooted together. The belt, again, here it does have just one bit of color deco on there. Kind of boring. Looks like the Eye of Osiris. Um, other than that, I guess it looks like it's supposed to be a cloth belt, like um, like a scarf tied around her waist, kind of, with that symbol on it. There is a lot. There's a lot of detail on the bottom of her shoes too. Now that I look at them, scarab design there, treads. I'm thinking though. I'm having problems trying to balance her. Yes, I know dolls aren't necessarily meant to be able to stand on their own, but with the skirt being that tight again and holding her legs so close together, it does make it difficult to pose her. So there you have it. This is our basic version of Cleo Denial. The hair looks great. I like the way that they made the hair look in this case. They really got kind of far away from the uh, previous style with her, where she had like the, what is it, the golds? She had like gold, black, and brown a lot in her hair. Um, they've been using a lot more blue schemes with her. Especially with her eye makeup, there's a lot of blue used nowadays when there wasn't previously. So, that being said, I think this is a pretty beautiful doll. This is also the closest I think we've ever gotten to them doing more of a, what would can be considered a traditional Cleopatra style dress, which is something they seem to be avoiding like the plague when it comes to Cleo denial, and I don't understand why. Because you think with some of these special dolls that they've done in the past, you know, especially with the Cam Comic Con uh, exclusive ones, I'm thinking of the archaeology pack that came with uh, Cleo and Gulia. Even though it was supposed to be they, the diary was G two, the dolls themselves were G one, and really makes Cleo out to be a terrible person um, accidentally. But that's a whole separate story. But that would have been the opportunity to have given her a more traditional Cleopatra style dress as the base. And they didn't do it then either. So, and I don't understand why Mattel seems to be avoiding that so much. And I think they should just give us a nice high quality Cleo Denial doll in something, some variation of a typical, stereotypical, I should say, uh, Cleopatra outfit. Because I don't even think they did that in the really nice, um, the Halt culture sets don't have that either. Which, I wonder if I should get around to opening up those and doing that on camera. Because I do have, I have the first few of those. I think I have Cleo, Claudine, Draculaura, and uh, Frankie from that line of uh, dolls. Anyway. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this uh, review of Cleo. Uh, if Cleo is a favorite of yours, I would definitely say buy this one. I would say buy her even if she's not, because I think this is a beautiful doll. And the f the face up on her is just great. Because Cleo's always had that kind of um, more exaggerated makeup look to it, more detailed makeup. And it looks really good on her here too. So, uh, Please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. And don't forget, I think this may be a Ross exclusive item. So uh, start your hunting there. Peace and love. Just on a side note, this kind of ticks me off. Um, multiple reasons. If you look here, they've got her glued. This cardboard is glued on the actual image of Cleo. And aside from the fact that, you know, 
as I've been doing lately, I like to take the artwork image and put it on my thumbnail as well as a dowel image. I also like to keep the artwork from these things because they look nice. And if it was down here somewhere only, that's no problem. I can cut it off. But they literally coated her boobs in glue. And that's annoying. 